noise. It's a video I've been dying to make. Definitely nervous. Um, I don't think I have enough Ziploc bags for this whole thing. We'll see how far we get tonight on this and uh, we'll just take our time. I want to learn. I want to see things. I want to show you guys things, obviously. Uh, also, shout out to Mitch Meadows. See this? We got to run the charger right here. Boom. See that? Skirt. Beautiful. If you guys don't remember uh, this lightweight battery, I'll link it down in the description. Check that out. It should be having a sale coming up. I can neither confirm or deny. I'm just gonna make it shit up as I go. But they got some nice shit. So I and and their link is in the description. So check them out. He's the homie. Word up. Earlier today, I made a video. I unboxed some new tools. You see, we're in a different garage now. But. Uh, this guy right here is going to come in real handy taking this, this block apart. So I already got the coil packs ready to go. We're going to yank those out. We're going to get this motor mount mount off, then hop to the alternator, then probably do the intake manifold and everything that's attached around that. Like, think how this whole assembly like attaches to that. I'm going to probably disconnect it here at the thermostat at this guy right here and uh try and get as i want as much things to stay together as possible so we will do what we can um this line comes around i'll probably disconnect it right here or just take it off the turbo um get that off down there turbo is going to come off we'll just disconnect the oil line the block and uh i don't know maybe do these coolant lines from there just like i said i want to take things off and as big as a, of an assembly as possible and then I'll like tape or whatever the nuts and bolts where they need to go or put them back in the block whatever make this as simple as possible to reassemble when the time comes on um, this heat shield there's gonna be all types of little things we're gonna learn if I need to look stuff up we'll look them up but uh man it's the last look at the motor Kind of some of this video you'll just see me rambling talking this is notes for myself at the same time when i go to reassemble everything um i'll be watching this video just to make sure things are going where they're going so a lot of this hardware is going to be replaced as well shop dap already has a, a whole list for me it's actually for the public the whole public has access to this list then you can go in and uncheck things that you don't uh want to replace so say you're doing this whole thing and you don't want to replace, um, I don't know, the O-rings for the dipstick. Like, okay, uncheck that box. You don't want to replace the nuts or the, the bolts for these actuators. We'll uncheck it. You don't need, you already have uh, an extra set of studs for the head for the turbo, like I do, uncheck that. So, it makes it real, real simple. One thing I found pretty funny, obviously ow 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 don't rub your turbo blanket don't do that but i haven't ran this this nut or this bolt for the coolant drain hasn't been on there since i installed the turbo i couldn't get it back in this is so close to the firewall if you haven't done a turbo uninstall or install it's pretty terrible and then the oil line that everybody loves to hate like i can't even see it right now it's such a pain in the ass well we'll get to it as i spill coolant everywhere anyway Let's get to it. All right, we're gonna start with the motor mount mount and move on to the intake manifold slash coolant stuff, PVC stuff. Um, get these coal packs out, turbo off, and then uh, figure out what we can do from there. I left the tool for the crank pulley um, at home, so that'll have to wait. That's definitely gonna be, the next video will be crank pulley and then getting this cover off, getting the timing chains and guides, all that shit out. But we'll see how well this tool works. It's 55 foot pounds from uh, itself and 150 I can do by myself. So we'll see if we can, nope. Oh. So much more convenient, holy crap. This one. Yep. Man, 
Man! Hopefully these are all about the same length. Like I said, I'm trying to keep things in check, so hopefully I don't have to move this box much. Things can stay in their place. So in here, you can kind of see, I've, I've had an oil leak for a long, long time. I mean, I cleaned a lot of this up, but you can see how dirty it is in here. I re replaced the seal on this a few times. I think it was really, really from like back in this area. But, uh, hopefully we won't have any oil leaks at all after this build. My garage floor got pretty freaking messy after a couple years of having an oil leak that I, I couldn't really nail. I think it was actually leaking from this at one point, but it was still um, down there somewhere at one point. Alright, I'm doing this. So I made a video earlier today that uh, now YouTube let me do this new thing. It's kind of like Patreon if you guys are familiar. And uh, basically you guys can subscribe again for money and it, uh, you guys get special perks. Like I can make videos just for the people that pay and do live streams and, and all that. So I'll be doing live streams on there every week, Q and A's. Uh, specific videos, you guys are going to be able to like vote. I'm like, hey Bryce, I really want to see this at the third. Go in depth as much as you can on this. And if I don't know it, I'm going to research it and then do it. Or tell you guys I'm too dumb to, to, to let you know. And I'll link you a video to someone who knows. But um, if you guys look here, I, I numbered all these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I also numbered the coal packs. One, two, three, four. So I know I want to put things back exactly where they came. I do want to replace all these, but I believe when uh, Paul from ShopDap showed me the price of these, they were extremely high. I wanted to replace all the coolant hoses um, along with the thermostat, water pump. The hoses are stupid high, and it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with mine really. So, but some of the things like like these, um, I mean, the high pressure fuel pump that'll be fine. But these, I'd really like to change. Gold packs are pretty much brand new. Um, obviously, all the gaskets, seals. Any one-time use bolts, that's all gonna be, you know, obviously replaced, so. We'll see if we can slam some of these into a bag. None of it really matters for these, it's pretty obvious on where they go, but. Looks like this might be like the easiest alternator removal ever. That's another thing, I like to replace the alternator. I've got about 80,000 on this motor. We just replaced our alternator the other day and had what, 168? 168,000. And that wasn't too bad, considering it's a BMW. <laughs> Woo, long boys. So. Woo. There we are. All right. Ooh. It's kind of heavy. <sighs> like I said, I'm going to put everything back. Came from boom, 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 into the box. Hit my pants again. So I disconnected this guy here because it goes up here, and also attached to this, which is attached to the intake, it goes down to the thermostat. So I disconnected that um, to get this intake manifold off. This little guy right here is going to have to come out for high pressure fuel pump. Line guy, I'm just, this should just be able to spin out of the way. Take this little guy, stuff it right back in. Boom. Now I'm gonna go around here um, to all these different points, disconnect, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to wiggle all this loose and then I'll do the intake manifold and take off all this with it. It's gonna be a big, ugly mess. Next up, we're gonna get this turbo blanket off with my terrible safety wire that was extremely hard to do with this thing installed on the car. Next time, well, when this goes back on, I'll be doing this with it uh, like it is. It'll be a lot easier. Two, out. Now really, I should be wearing gloves because there's a lot of, what's it called? Fiberglass. Fiberglass, yeah, fiberglass in this shit, so. Make you real itchy if you guys touch this a whole bunch. This is like tucked way down in there. Should have brought more tools. Oh 
It's not. The gloves on. Let me just rip this off. There we go. And see, might have been yeah, look like a little bit of wear here. Some heat got to it. Nothing too terribly crazy. A little burn right there. Looks a lot better than my last one though. This is going in the trash. You can't reuse these. Once they get hot and up to operating temperature, they kind of like mold to the uh, to whatever they're installed on. So you can see my nice little thing here. You can see all the little fibers on. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Can you see it? Maybe not. Yeah, you can kind of see all the little fibers on there. It looks pretty, but we're going to be upgrading exhaust housings. If I have it my way and can afford, well, I think I'm just going to take as long as it takes. Go ahead, bring it up. I'm going to take as long as it takes to get this motor. Just do it. Do it once. Just get it all done. So I don't have to pull things off and upgrade things. I was thinking, okay, I have all the bottom end stuff. I don't really have the money right now to build the head, so I could do that later on, but then I gotta basically pull the motor again, redo all the timing, you know, TC, cams, torque, values, you know, all that stuff. I don't, I don't wanna do it twice if I don't have to. And then I'm buying gaskets, gaskets again, I'm buying all the one-time use stuff again. I don't, I don't wanna do all that, so. However long it takes is how long it's gonna take. I'll just have to save up money, quit buying so much beer, and Doing shit, but you know, we have all winter. It's not gonna get warm again here until what, like March, January, February, March, April ish. I think March is like the first autocross event and it's still usually pretty dang cold. So we have time. And that's what we usually get taxes back by then too. So I don't know, we'll see. We got merch coming, so yeah. Alright, so I got the M8 triple square off the coolant inlet. I'm going to take out a couple of screws up here so I get more more play here and I'll be able to pop this guy right out. I have a lot of these up already loose from when I had to uh, do stuff way earlier. Might have to undo more than just those two actually. Those are loose, I'm not take them out. This tool is saving me so much time. Let me make sure these are all the same length. Well, two of them are shorter. I think the two shorter ones went. You gotta remember that. So, this whole system's loose. We'll get that disconnected. Then we'll be able to pull this guy off. already I should probably replace this line's like pretty hard and brittle it seems be a lot of stuff getting replaced as we reassemble I already got a whole list of things I need to order my front sway bar bushings my flywheel bolts uh, that bad torque rent oh look I just split that thing too huh so yeah this thing was it was its time time to go mate that off this coolant line should pop right off here wiggle 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 boom now most of this should be free well I gotta disconnect it the coolant line here on the side of the block and then actually this whole thing will come off by itself without the intake manifold I thought it was gonna be we'll get that Start plugging some holes and putting stuff back where it belongs. Boom. Like I said, I want to keep things as connected as possible, so there we go. Didn't need to, but here we are. Set her down. Alright, next up are these. I don't know the proper name for these you'll see but like our exhaust cam like these 
pins go in and they change a lot of things. I don't I don't want to talk like I know exactly how it works or how it very teeny little T what T25 Get a close can. Will it be in focus? Okay. These should like move or something. Like once they get, I don't want to. Yeah, it like spins. Pretty sure it pops out, and this is just like the furthest back position. I don't know. And there's seals on all these, and I've taken them all off a couple times. So all of that definitely needs replaced after eighty something thousand. Seems like rotating them and using the tab as some leverage. Come on, guy. E man veins. And all the seals do look pretty good after. Oh this oil doesn't look super clean though either. It looks kind of like my trans oil. <laughs> Oh, there's some new oil on there too. Probably a little bit of metallic -y goodness up here with a bunch of, you know, the cam. This is touching the cam constantly. So I'm going to clean these up, throw some tape over them, move on to the next thing. All right, taking off the intake manifold here. Anywhere there's one up top, like that one, there's one matching. So you got one there and one down this hole. One there, same, same. These holes, these, your socket will get caught if you put a socket through here like I am. And you got to pull it back out. You got to be careful because it'll that it'll grab onto it, and then you'll lose your socket down this hole. It'll wind up on top of the thermostat. And this is in the car, and it does that. You're gonna have a bad time. So there's like another one down there. You can kind of see. So I got these bottom ones out. What I use here to get them out is a set of. Now you can take this mechanical fingers here. Or mechanical claws, what do you want to call them? Throw them out in there, grab the head of the, the bolt, pull them out. Makes life real easy. That's the same way I get them in too. So, get it on there. These corner ones are like kind of a pain in the butt. This can help it. Can't fucking see them. There we go. I don't think this one's screwed out the whole way. It's probably one. Once they're loose, you can actually like just rotate these on there. See, boom. As I put them on and take them off, I use these, stick it in there, get the thread started so you know it's not going to fall out, and then uh, torque them down. There's what? One, two, three, eight, twelve, one, two, ten, four, five. Yeah, there's ten. Ten all together. So. You can stop it. All right. So I forgot how excited I am to see the valves. Hopefully I'm not disappointed. So I've been running port injection, which for any of you guys don't know what that is, these, car comes, these cars come from the factory direct injection. United, United States models do, European ones. Um, before 2019, have they, they have port injection as well. But uh, So what that means is, with port, basically port injectors spray fuel on to the back of the valves and they stay clean. Because of that, you don't have a bunch of carbon buildup. Well, with direct injectors, they spray right into the cylinder. So there's no fuel getting on to the valves, um, which causes a lot of carbon buildup over time, anywhere between 70, 60, 70, 80,000, usually before 100,000 miles, you can get carbon cleaning, whether you do it at home. Uh, home Mechanic has a really good video on this. Shop Dap just did a video on this like three days ago. Um, watch their videos if you want to get more screwed on the subject. Basically, I take this off. I'm hoping to see that my valves look cleaner than what they did before I put in port injection. I didn't really clean them at all. I scraped off like a couple of big chunks of shit and uh, just wanted to see how port injection would clean them up over time. So, 
not even 30,000 miles. I think I did port injection at about 54, and I'm at like 80,000. I don't even think I'm at 81,000 yet, so. Here we go. I think. That water here is going to prevent me. I forget how exactly. Yeah, here we go. Oh, okay. They don't look too terrible from here. There are a couple connectors we've got to rip off, and then I'll show you guys how she looks. So, my camera kind of sucks at these things, trying to focus in on spots like this, clearly, as you can tell. The they look way better than what they did at like 50 whatever thousand when I did port injection. There is definitely some carbon build up there, but it's like not bad at all. You can kind of see, I'll get the camera, my phone camera out and get a nice flashlight stuck in there and get you guys pictures. I'll post them up right now. But not the worst. Definitely seen far worse. Nice. We've been working on this turbo for a minute. What did I say? At least 20 minutes trying to get the lines, the uh, coolant lines off the block. There was a bunch of like brine built up in the screws. So that was the first thing, getting those kind of cleaned out with a scribe and some cleaner. And then we had to like kind of like hammer tap uh, the M8 in there to even get them out. And now they, they can't even, they won't even like rotate at all. Trust me, I tried. I threw, threw some PB Blaster on them. Called it a day. Disconnected it from the turbo itself. Now, uh, turbo lines are broke loose. We're gonna. Besides this last one, I didn't do yet. Okay. We're gonna grab these bottom ones out first and uh, rip this turbo off. And maybe get those lines out tomorrow. But this will be this will be the end of it for today. It's late. We are tired. It's been a long day. We good. Here we go. Oh boy. Oh yeah, I forgot about that line. Uh -huh. Well, uh, turbo's off. Now I've had a leak, it looks like, a little bit. These bolts weren't the tightest at all. So, could have been down on power for a while now. Let me make sure we replace these studs and uh, Probably get this resurfaced or just get the XL housing will be probably the best move. Right. Take two, got the line off. Boom. Stuck on the wastegate. There she is, mate. Mighty fine, I'd say. Well. Sorry, guys, if I really suck at doing that. I'm a little buzz, a little tired, a lot of tired actually. I need a fresh place to put this. Well guys, it is midnight 30. I am exhausted. I've been wearing boots for 19 hours now. This is uh this is it for part one. Part one of many. Many, many. Hopefully the machine shop's cool. Lets me come there and hang out at least like watch one cylinder get bored or something and I'm hoping the trans guy will record at least a couple clips of them doing their trans stuff and boy oh boy it really doesn't like mean so far I mean some of the things like most I really didn't expect those lines to give me that much of trouble like these coolant lines going onto the block are like so freaking seas like, I, I think I'm just gonna like I'm about to like probably destroy them Getting them off, I knocked them with some PB blaster here. Well, uh, maybe they'll come out in the morning. I don't know, but uh, yeah. That's part one. We said of many. Stay tuned. Not a lot coming. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the football.